Um, I'm Lizzie Hutton. I'm the director of the Howe Writing Center, and I'm here with Destiny Brugman, who's a graduate assistant director at the Howe Writing Center, and we've been asked to talk to you all about the art of revision, um, which is something we think a lot about, obviously, at the Writing Center. Um, and we are going to put in some plugs for you all to come visit the Writing Center as well. So we'll be talking about that throughout. Um, and we'll have questions at the end. So just to go over a brief agenda, um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about revising as a graduate student. Um, as we're going to mention, revising looks really different in different contexts. So I think it's important to recognize what revising might look like um, at this particular you know, point in your career and in this particular context and environment as a graduate student. Um, we're going to talk about different writing processes. Um, and how that relates to the way we can conceptualize revising. So I really want us to sort of theorize those processes as they relate to revising. And then we're going to go through some, some strategies for revision. So um, I'm going to hand it over now to Destiny, who's going to, because she's a graduate student, she's going to get us started talking about what revising looks like as a graduate student. She can speak from experience. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, as we were kind of like thinking like what would be interesting or useful, um, I was thinking a lot about like the different, the differences between kind of like what revision looked like for me in undergrad and what it's looked like for me as like a graduate student. And I think that, um, you know, it looked, and especially like because, at, so I'm like studying English and so we're always kind of like sharing our writing with each other, talking to each other about our different ideas. Um, and so with that, like I've seen all of these like different ways that people have, people are in the middle of writing um, and what, what that looks like based on kind of like what people are working on. And so for some, it's very like, revision is very like baked into the writing process itself. Um, it doesn't happen. It happens like in moments kind of like progressively as people are writing. Um, or it can be like a total overhaul at the end. Um, for example, I've had moments where I've had to like have dual screens up and just like completely rewrite from scratch exactly what I've written before um, in a new document. And sometimes it is just kind of like obsessing over a paragraph and kind of like trying to figure out like, is this doing what I want it to be doing and changing the words and changing what's going on there um, before kind of moving on. Um, and sometimes I feel like we're doing our rewriting from like the beginning of the process. Sometimes we kind of like wait. I know some, I, I call these like brain barf documents, but I just have to like get all of my ideas down um, and then kind of make them make sense later. And recently I've been kind of thinking about the differences between kind of like the genres I'm asked to write in and what revision looks like in those. So when I'm writing something like a seminar paper, it sometimes it comes down to the wire and it, it, there isn't necessarily a, as much revision as I'd like, just based on, you know, the constraints of time um, and being a busy graduate student. But things like um, uh, conference proposals, I'll sit there and kind of like agonize over like, does this, is this sentence doing enough work for the entirety of like what it is that we're proposing? And I've been doing a lot of collaborative work lately. So it's kind of like rewriting and be like, well, do we have the right citations for this? Is, are we kind of describing and justifying like what it is that we want to be sharing? Um, and it can be a little bit more specific in that way. Um, and we, you know, it, it looks so different in so many ways. So that's kind of what we wanted to share with you is that like, especially as a grad student, when you're kind of existing in this in-between space of both being a professional and trying to like forge your way into kind of like a professional field as a writer um, and also someone who has to like be a grad student and produce some sort of writing for class purposes and then what happens to that writing after the class um, can, has been a question that's on my mind and that I've been working on um, throughout this semester, especially since I have writing from last semester that I'm kind of pulling over. Um, and yeah, I think 
in this revision, it can be end up being more like, how do I more clearly articulate my ideas or even how do I refine and revisit and like revise the ideas themselves um, based on like new knowledge that I'm gaining, um, especially in the case of uh, like a seminar paper and trying to turn that into something else afterward. So next, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about kind of like revising in the writing process, which I kind of touched a little bit on, but I, I'm kind of obsessed with the writing process. I th think it's really cool and messy and weird. Um, and so I think it's kind of comprised of like several different things. So we have everything from understanding the goals of the rhetorical situation, um, kind of what, what are the constraints? What's like driving me to write this piece of paper, piece of writing? Who's like the audience that I'm writing to? What's my stake in it? And like, why should I be trusted to write it? Um, that kind of goes into like this writing process and, you know, building, building up like how I can be trusted to write it. So like doing my research, et cetera, is kind of like in that. Um, and that goes hand in hand with kind of this generation of ideas. Um, and developing ideas and revision can happen kind of at every step of this process. I think I feel like I'm revising ideas all of the time and that's maybe one of the biggest moments of revision for me is kind of figuring out, well, what are those ideas and how do I do it? And also doing that in like making massive change with the writing that is happening. Um, also with the writing process, it can be organizing ideas, everything from putting and then putting words down on a page, which is sometimes the hardest part of writing, um, getting feedback. I, I get feedback on every stage, even before I get anything down. I think I text every single person I know when I have a new idea and I'm like, how I need to talk through this idea. I sent like a seven minute voice memo last night to one of my friends about like an idea I was working through. Um, and then finally kind of like polishing and getting it presentable and into kind of like a product form. Um, and, you know, we were really thinking about how, like, when we're trying to figure out what is the writing process that it like looks different for everyone and um, doesn't always exist in a linear way. <laughs> um, it's, you know, we, people who study writing know that like, the writing process can be really messy um, and typically is. And so um, it, I wish, I wish in my heart that it was sitting down and writing one thing and then like being done. Um, and that's just not, I'm just not lucky like that. I don't think anyone is really lucky like that. Um, and so, you know, instead of it being something where we put words down on a page in the kind of like a linear fashion, it happens in like the construction of knowledge. It happens in that reading and researching. I kept thinking about that last night. I was like, wow, like the note taking and the reading and the way that changes my ideas um, is such a huge part of my writing process right now. Um, taking notes and figuring out like how taking notes helps you. Um, and getting words on the page, which again, I think is one of the hardest parts <laughs> um, talking through your ideas, walking around. I even think that like walking around the neighborhood and thinking about your project is like a way of revision. Like I, before I was even a grad student, I had grad students telling me that like running was part of their writing process. So I think that is a big part of it as well. Um, and so to kind of like demonstrate like what the writing process is like and how it can be kind of different and messy, we have an activity for you today. Um, and I will drop the link in the chat. Um, and hopefully that works. And so what we, and mine is in there too. So just like find, um, and take a couple of minutes to find an empty slide on this Jamboard. And we're wanting you to kind of like think through and like map your writing process. You can also do it privately and not do it on the Jamboard. Sometimes it might be like a little intimidating to put it out there, but you don't even have to sign your name to it. Um, and so really, I, and mine's on there too. You can see kind of what my messy, weird writing process looks like. Um, but there are um, kind of like various aspects to the writing process, including messy parts, which write it, which, 
research shows that the writing process is messy. Um, whether you're discussing the time you've spent reading and researching or taking different kinds of breaks, including how long they were, um, it can look a lot of different ways. And so um, we really just wanted you to take a second to kind of like reflect on what that writing process looks like for you um, and share it on the Jamboard, draw it on a piece of paper, um, really anything like that, whether it's um, like what is it that like gets you going? What is it that makes it so that you're writing um, kind of a thing? So we're gonna give you a little bit of time to do that. Yeah, we'll give you about five minutes and then maybe we'll come back and share a few insights about what our processes look like. And so the first thing I was thinking, because I'm doing it right now for this chapter that, uh, that I just started working on and immediately upon reading a couple of scholarly articles, realized that um, what I thought I was gonna say, someone has already said. So <laughs> I have to now figure out what am I really gonna say? Um, so I've been doing a lot of reading um, and like note taking and haven't really jumped into the, the writing yet, but I, I've found for my dissertation, the last, the two chapters I've written that um, I'm usually, I think I work from like a, just try to write the whole thing through and see what I come up with. But um, with the dissertation, I've been a little bit more intentional because I kind of had an outline of what I wanted to say already um, with trying to stick to that outline and, and just fleshing out the points of my outline and the outline changes and, you know, goes through various phases and, ends up not really looking like the, my prospectus, like my proposal, um, but still remains kind of faithful to the core ideas of it. And that's a really interesting element of revising to me is how much things change and transform and how much we actually try to keep them yoked to that like original intention and that sort of back and forth decision-making you're constantly doing about, you know, like, and, and what you just said, sometimes you hit a roadblock, which is like, I had this great idea and someone else already said it. So do I reframe it? Do I start over? Yeah. <laughs> do I say it again, but with different evidence? Like there's lots of ways to deal with that, but that requires back, you know, steps back instead of just steps forward. Definitely. Yeah. I, I feel like it also required me to get to a point. I mean, this is the third time it's happened now because every chapter there's like, oh, wait, somebody already said that. I, I'm now at a point now where I'm, when I'm confronted with that, it's not horrifying. It's like, right. oh, that's okay. There's Good. still going to be something to say. Part of the process. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I like that. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I put up one that was like, um, one of my big ones was like getting frustrated and walking away and despair setting in. But then you come back and you're like, no, I think I can do this. And, and I found for myself setting deadlines, especially now that I'm no longer in grad school, I still need to, like, I don't have like such strict deadlines because I don't have like a supervisor, an advisor, but setting like conference, you know, conference presentations are good deadlines and um, having some, some, something that's going to force you to get out of your pit of despair and just do something messy. Um, do we have any others up here that we could talk through? Or Destiny, did you have anything else to add? I was just gonna chime in on the, yeah. the thing about deadlines because I, or that feeling of despair. I feel like this process has just been one where I just have to go through every emotion imaginable and have every feeling toward my chapter. And you know, these chapters aren't even really done, but I do feel like I've just had so many different emotions and reactions to it and they mirror one another. Like my experience with the first chapter really was a lot like my experience with the second chapter. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ready for this third chapter to be the same way. Like I know, you know, despair is gonna kick in at some point. <laughs> you just have to be ready when it does. <laughs> right, like the seven stages of grief or whatever it is, you know that there's sort of a trajectory. So at least knowing that doesn't make it go away, but it prepares you maybe a little bit more emotionally for it. <laughs> Definitely. That's great, thank you. Um, Destiny, did you want to add anything else from your own yeah, map I, that you drew? I, um, 
you know, I feel like it, it's a lot of like going back and forth on like what it is that I'm doing, Mm -hmm. which is why I like have all of the arrows that point multiple ways. Um, is that for me, it's a lot about talking through ideas, which is why, you know, and this, you know, I, it's why I love the writing center is because I do get to like go in and kind of talk through my messy ideas and like someone, it's not like bothering someone else who's like supposed to be doing Mm -hmm. their own work. Um, Mm -hmm. which is really nice, but you know, I think it looks different in each kind of like context that I'm writing in, but like similarly, like I have really big documents, they have lists, they have notes, they have like all of these different things. And then one of the last things I do before turning something in um, is usually like some sort of formatting to make it look a certain way. Like when I'm reading through and doing like final edits and revisions, all everything's like single spaced and then I like turn it into double spaced as I like finish each section. Um, So like even just like weird material things like that um, go into kind of my process of doing this work too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, those little sort of formatting things are often for me sort of satisfying and sort of like, it's like, you know, I don't know, putting the dishes away or something. It feels like, okay, this is gonna work. Okay, I'm going to go back to our, um, to our slide deck and I'll, um, okay, so that's great. So what we're going to talk about now are some strategies for revision, given the discussion we had about process. So um, for us, it's really important to clarify your goals. Um, that's one of the first, you know, first ways we can think about revision is just a way of clarifying your goals. Like, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to do? And as we just discussed, sometimes that happens like further along than we hoped because we have to go back a little bit and be like, oh, maybe I need to reframe my goals because this has already been said or, I, you know, it's not quite working the way I wanted it to. So one sort of layer of revision we could think about Um, is to clarify your goals and make sure what you're writing is explicitly meeting those goals, right? It's doing what you intend it to do. And one way we can do this is by analyzing the genre moves um, in a piece of writing that you're working on um, by answering some of these questions. What needs to happen in this assignment or this genre? Like if it's a dissertation chapter, what What's the actual thing that needs to happen? And how do I indicate to the reader that that is happening? So you have your goals and then you need to make it clear to your reader that that's indeed what you're doing. And we can do this through like signal phrases or word signals, you know, like really strong topic sentences, you know, those signposts that that can be really important. Subheadings, um, a lot of fields do that through graphics. Um, You can ask yourself, is there anything missing from what, from if, if I have this goal and I'm playing it out in this piece of writing, is there something somehow missing from that, right? What does my reader need to know in order for my writing to be doing what it's supposed to be doing? Or is there maybe a step in the logic missing somewhere there? So that's one way to sort of conceptualize revision is is that that level um, of of knowing your goals and making them clear to your reader. Um, Another way we can think about revision is through organization, right? How is the paper structured sequentially from beginning to end? Um, and one way we can think about this is, is logical organization, right? So taking out any repetitions, this is once you know your goal, what your goal is, right? And you know that all the pieces are there to meet your goal. Then you can think about how are the pieces fitting together, right? One of my dissertation advisors said, it's like you have all the Play-Doh and now you're like playing with the Play-Doh and making it into different shapes, but you're not going to add any new Play-Doh. Um, So is it organized logically? You could take out repetition, um, ordering arguments so that they build to the correct, you know, most emphatic point that you want to make, um, emphasizing the right points so that your point isn't like buried, you know, at the bottom of the paragraph, but it's, it's clear to the reader as something that you want to underscore and have them pay attention to. The reader knows what bouncing ball to be following as they read. Um, Sometimes it has to do with defining your terms, making sure that, um, the reader is really following how this terminology is being used to support your argument. Um, offering your reader that roadmap, often like in you know introductory paragraphs, an abstract, 
um, even like method sections can do that where we, we show sort of the reader the logic by which something's um, operating. And as I talked about before, that, that work of signposting. And one thing Destiny and I talked about this when we were planning this that we both really love as a strategy for this is reverse outlining, um, where you look at something that's actually already been written. So you, it's not like you're writing an outline for something that hasn't been written. It's called reverse outlining because you're outlining something that already has been written, but you're going through it and you're marking in the margins like what what am I doing in this paragraph like what's the main evidence that I'm what's the argument I'm making what's the main evidence I'm drawing on. And then that can help you go back through and see it sort of see the forest from the trees a little bit and make better decisions about are the paragraphs making sense in that order or should they actually be in a slightly different order um, or maybe you know <laughs> the paragraph is focused on a few different points and that's confusing and maybe you should separate them or maybe the third paragraph and the first paragraph are actually seeing the same thing so they should be combined right so that work of reverse outlining can really help us think about those structural issues without sort of getting in the weeds of like you know re rewriting sentences on that you know word to word level but rather thinking about it in terms of big chunks of text and steps in an idea and reverse outlining can be done by yourself and i do it all the time as a writer but it's also really useful sometimes to do it with someone else because you might have an idea about what you think a paragraph is saying because you wrote it and you have this intention but your reader might be like yeah no that's not what it's saying to me i i see it em emphasizing something actually quite different and then that can help you sort of again oh i'm not being clear enough in, in what i'm trying to say or or oh my reader's right i am saying two different things in this paragraph i thought i was just saying one thing so having another reader can really help with that process as well um and then another layer which I think is the layer most people think about when they think about revising is this issue of polishing, right? Which is really like that sentence level stuff, right? Are the sentences clear? Are the citations doing what they need to do? You know, am I, am I, am I missing an, uh, an important, you know, set of authors who wrote some seminal piece? Um, am I putting my parentheses in the right place? Um, is my terminology being used correctly? Should I make slightly different lexical choices in terms of word choice? Um, does formatting, like what Destiny was talking about, does that all match the conventions that are expected for this? Are there words missing? Really little things, like sort of that's like at the level of like copy editing, right? Um, and reading your work out loud at this stage can be really helpful. If we're talking back about organizing, sometimes reading, reading your work out loud gets you off track because you start polishing stuff before you really figure out what your structure is going to be. So it's good to know sort of what what level where where you want your revising energy to be focused do you want it to be about clarifying your goals do you want it to be about organizing your ideas or do you want it to be at the level of polishing try not to do them all at once because then you're going to like tear your hair out um but this is also a stage at which it's useful to get other eyes on other eyes on your writing um so the final strategy for revision in terms of other eyes is this feedback right feedback is really crucial because as i said earlier we have notions about what we want to do and what we think we're doing but that's not always landing to different readers so asking for feedback from different folks and at different stages of the process is really useful and it's also really important to remember that it's helpful in different ways depending on where you are in your process and who those people are Different people are going to give you feedback that's diff that's useful for different reasons. So also asking for help for feedback really strategically, I think can be can be useful because sometimes feedback can actually get you a little bit off track if it's not what you need at that moment. Right. So sometimes it's really challenging to figure out how to ask for feedback and from whom. But the more you get used to asking for feedback and the more clearly you can start to articulate what your feedback needs are right what you actually want help with what are you concerned about at this stage in your process not like existentially in general as a writer but what at this stage in your process would be really useful for you the easier it gets to get in those habits of asking for feedback that's really pointed so that feedback can attend to clarifying your goals organizing or polishing and feedback from disciplinary peers right the people in your program 
people who are in the same field as you can really help you attend to stuff like how your ideas are developing, whether you need better counter arguments. Is there some author that you're missing that you, you know, that you read about two years ago and completely forgot? And of course you need to make a reference to that, some gap in your literature view. That's really useful from people who are in your field and know that field really well. If your mom read this, this, you know, chapter, they might not be able to give you that kind of really pointed field specific feedback. Right. But then other people can give you feedback that's really useful. Um, a, a, a friend or a parent can help you with that polishing work or can help you figure out, you know, that the logic of your argument isn't completely unfolding. Um, your faculty advisor might be able to point out things that a disciplinary peer wouldn't yet know about because the faculty advisor has maybe broader experience with with a variety of different genres um, related to your discipline. Um, and of course, writing consultants at the How Writing Center, and we're going to put our plug in at the end, can be really useful for helping just get another pair of eyes on your paper and helping you talk through what your intentions are. And although the writing consultant is not necessarily from your field specifically, they are pretty familiar with a lot of disciplinary writing conventions related to grad student writing. So at all of those stages as well, a writing consultant can be useful. Okay. And then Destiny, I think you were going to take this slide. Yeah. Um, so we also wanted to like emphasize that like this looks different across like contexts. Um, collaborative writing can really kind of like complicate what revision looks like, whether it's um, something that you're doing together, like in a moment or you're doing collaborative work and then getting some sort of feedback from someone and then having to kind of like interpret that feedback together or separately, just depending on schedules, et cetera. Um, and how that revising then happens, whether it's together or kind of like alone and just like collaboration kind of like complicates the ways we think about revision, especially when you're doing like very like 50, 50 split kind of collaborative work and you're trying to make sure that, you know, it sounds like one cohesive voice um, in what you're writing. Um, it also depends on like where you are in your graduate program. Um, writing seminar papers for me is going to look different than writing a dissertation. <laughs> um, that kind of like feedback and revision work is going to have kind of like different means to it, kind of like different goals um, for the end of it. And, you know, for me, it might be a lot more about kind of getting to know ideas and writing to kind of like figure out what it is that my thoughts are and what I want to pursue later. Um, and it also depends on kind of like faculty expectations in that way. Um, Lizzie and I were talking about how toward the beginning of a program, it might be like a seminar paper and you don't want to like take too much on and like how do you kind of like navigate the expectations of being like a new professional in a field and trying to learn that field and figure out how you fit into it and what your research interests are. Um, and again, what are you writing toward? Um, is it a dissertation, journal article, conference proposal, job application material, um, lab notes? Like all of those things are going to kind of influence what it is and like who you ask for feedback from and how much revision you do um, because of that. Um, another question that kind of shows up when you're thinking about the different contexts is like how much time has passed since your last revision. Um, for me, I find it really helpful to have written something and taken a decent amount of time away from it without kind of thinking about it. I'm in the middle of working on a paper right now that I've taken like a couple of months off from looking at and I'm like, wow, some of these ideas just like didn't make sense at all. But like when you're kind of like stuck in it and like up to your eyeballs and your own writing, it's like hard to necessarily do bigger revisions sometimes. Um, so I think getting that space and getting time to kind of like reflect and then dive back in can be really helpful. Um, and I think that's also tied to kind of like knowledge and how you're going to probably continue to be doing research and doing reading and having conversations, even if it's not necessarily about the specific paper, but all of that is going to influence you um, and kind of like thinking about what is your knowledge, how has your knowledge changed from like that first initial kind of like drafting and revising that you were doing, and how does that look differently um, now, and what kinds of constraints are there 
around that. Um, one example that Lizzie and I were talking about is that you might have gotten like a publication accepted and be in the middle of revising that and suddenly you have find this like brilliant idea that you're like, oh, this completely changes how I think about that. But sometimes you can't like do that revision work because of kind of the constraints of what you proposed or what you wrote and kind of submitted and like the amount of time and kind of how the editorial process goes with publishing. So there are big constraints like that that can sometimes shift how you have to think about doing your revision. Um, and then finally kind of like clarifying versus like developing and transforming your argument um, when it comes to revision. And sometimes it, it can be, especially with that new knowledge that you're gaining and kind of depending on what context you're in, um, developing and transforming your idea might end up being more of your focus. Or if you know your ideas are really there and you've been working on it for a long time and you come back to your piece, um, clarifying and trying to make sure that everything is like making sense um, could be a little bit more aligned with like what your goal is for the revision. Um, so like what, is the revision just sharpening your ideas or is it producing something new and different from earlier drafts? And I find myself even like writing different papers that are like revisions of the same idea, but like have nothing to do with each other and kind of like separate papers doing separate things, um, but are definitely like influenced and connected with each other as well. Um, so that's a little bit on kind of like how we were thinking about um, revision across different contexts. Great, thank you. Okay, so I just also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about um, proofreading versus editing versus um, revising, because this is something I talk with my students about and also my the consultants that I train at the How Writing Center. Um, I think a lot of people, especially when they're looking for feedback, they sort of default to proofreading. They're like, just check it over, make sure nothing's wrong, you know, does it make sense? These are sort of the big questions we get a lot at the writing center. And I think sometimes people think that means going through it and marking like actual errors, right? So it's a work of error correction. And that's what proofreading is. It's, it's going over something right before it goes to proof in a, in a publishing house, right? To make sure there's no errors, but there's no time at that point in the process to make those kinds of transformative changes that Destiny was just talking about. So proofreading, I, I think it's really important to put sort of over in one category and be really clear, like that's the kind of thing you do at the very, very end of your process, right? There's no point in proofreading something when you've just started taking notes on it because it's all gonna change anyway, right? So don't start like painting the house before you finish building it, right? So when we get to the, the, the next category, which is editing, that to me is sentence level changes, clarifications, word choice, etc. But revising is a really much more capacious category, which can include editing, but which also includes that really big picture rethinking, seeing something anew, right? Revisioning it, seeing it in a new way, which might really entail big structural changes or actual changes in the content of the idea so not just reorganizing it but maybe like having like setting yourself different intentions and different goals so i think it's important to know what we're doing when and why and not to fall into the trap of thinking that revising just constitutes editing and proofreading and really not to fall into the trap of thinking that revising just constitutes proofreading but that it often requires those bigger questions and when you're looking for feedback, it might require you to articulate that to the person you're looking for feedback from to say, look, I, I'm, I don't want you to just like correct my, you know, comma usage. What we're talking about in the, at this stage in my process is like, are my goals like the right goals for this assignment or you know, is this organized in a way that's going to logically, you know, prove my argument as best as it might be proved and let's like put the proofreading to the side for now. So I think it's really important to be able to sort of be able to use that language when we when we ask for feedback and talk to people about feedback. Um, so now, as promised, Destiny, I, I did want to put a plug in for the How Writing Center. So um, as I said at the beginning of our presentation, I'm the director of the How Writing Center. I train all of our consultants. Destiny is the graduate assistant um, director, and she's also a graduate writing consultant. So at the How Writing Center, we have both undergrad and graduate level consultants. They both go through rigorous training where they learn about writing studies, theory, 
Um, they learn about learning theory and they learn about writing center theory and practices. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how our practices in the writing center align with what researchers know about stuff like the writing process, all that stuff that Destiny was talking about at the beginning of the presentation. So we have a really fantastic new cohort of graduate student writing consultants right now that um, who just finished getting trained. We also have graduate student writing consultants who were trained last year and the year before. Um, and because it's COVID, we don't have in-person consulting, but we do have both live online and written online consulting. And I'll just really quickly explain those. Live online, you use video conferencing. So it's sort of like through Zoom. It's not through Zoom, it's through our platform called WC Online. But video conferencing, audio conferencing, chat, and you can look at a shared whiteboard and look at the text and talk about it together. So it's a really great way to get some real-time feedback. Um, we also have written online consulting where you send your paper in with a detailed what we call appointment form where you describe what it is you want feedback on. I'm worried about, you know, my first five pages because my advisor gave me this feedback on it or <clears throat> I'm having trouble, you know, clarifying my method section, whatever it is that you want your um, consultant to pay attention to. Um, you describe that in the appointment form, you'd send your work in. And then, then you don't have to show up for an appointment. The writing center consultant spends that scheduled hour looking at your writing and crafting feedback and sending it back to you. So those are two different options for how you can get feedback from the How Writing Center. And when you make an appointment, you can actually go um, on to our scheduling appointment and you can select to work with a graduate student. It's marked, the different consultants who are graduate students, it's marked in the margins, whether they are a graduate student or not. So you can choose to work specifically with a graduate student, which a lot of graduate students like to do because as I said, our graduate students are pretty familiar with a lot of different of the, the conventions of, of doctoral level writing. Um, am I, should I add anything else, Destiny? Is there anything else to add in terms of encouraging people to use the Writing Center? Well. Also, it can, you can use the Writing Center really um, wherever in the process you are. So a lot, for me, a lot of what's useful is going to be during like brainstorming when I'm trying to like organize my ideas and figure out my ideas. And so that live online becomes like really super useful to me. Um, I had a live online appointment just last week and I was talking with my consultant and I was like, I, all we ever do is talk about money here. I'm only ever here to kind of like work on like grant funding situations or all of these different kind of like applications and stuff. Um, but it was like, when I started doing that, it was even just like helpful to be able to talk to someone who had definitely kind of like gone through that before and was like, my advisor gives me this very specific advice about kind of like looking at um, grad funding. And because we have consultants from like, several different disciplines it's like so interesting and useful to be able to like have that kind of like outsider perspective um especially when you know we have these like things that are in common as grad students but there are also like you know this is really useful advice that like <laughs> your advisor gave you and totally applies to me so then um being able to kind of like take that and kind of think about things and like kind of dynamic ways. So I really like the live online, um, but I'm also a talker as a writer. So um, that's really useful to me. And I love that I can brainstorm there and kind of like start building ideas from the ground up before really having to do anything because my writing process is so messy. Um, it's really helpful in that way too. And what you just said, Destiny, did remind me, I should mention that when you make a writing center appointment, you don't actually, if it's a live online appointment, you don't actually have to come with any writing. You can come with an idea for writing and spend the time generating like notes and an outline through talking with your consultant. So I think sometimes people think they have to arrive at the, at the consultation with something in hand. And you actually don't. For live online, you can just come and say, hey, I have this thing I'm, I need to start writing and I need help just talking it out. And then through that discussion, you will generate a bunch of, you know, plans or alternative ideas or ways to ways to begin approaching that. So um, that's important to remember. Um, and the other thing that Destiny also made me think of is that you can make an appointment twice a week every week for the entire semester and a lot of our graduate students do come in for repeat appointments often with the same consultant so that's also something else to keep in mind if you find it really useful to work with 
a certain consultant, or you find it useful to get a variety of consultants' points of view, that's fine. You can use us as often as twice a week. So please take advantage. It's a really, really great resource. Um, okay, I think that's everything. So are there any questions from our small audience <laughs> about revising or about um, the How Writing Center in particular? I did have one question. Uh, my chapters are pretty long. Uh, so would I just submit like an excerpt or of the chapter? Like here's this section. I'm wondering if it, you know, kind of flows mm -hmm. leads to the right kind of conclusion mm -hmm. of the section or how does that work? For, for, a, for a writing center consultation. Yeah. So if you did a live online, you could just explain that to the consultant and then you could come up with a plan. Cause sometimes when I've worked with graduate students in the past, sometimes we'll like skim the first three pages and then we'll zero in on, you know, pages four through six or, so sometimes having that discussion with the consultant can be really helpful in terms of deciding what it is you want to focus on. But it is important to remember, like if you, if you come in with a 20, 30 page document, there's absolutely no way the consultants be able to read through that and give you feedback on, on all 20 or 30 pages of that because the sessions are only 45 minutes. Um, but you could say, let's look at the first five pages and then next week maybe we'll look at the next five pages and the week after that. So there's ways to sort of divide that up. Um, and if you do a written online consultation, just articulating that in the appointment form. Is, is what's really useful for the consultant. If you don't articulate, the consultant will do that deciding work for you and it might not be exactly what you hoped for. So it's better to get ahead of it and tell them what would be useful for you. But yeah, live online as Destiny was saying is a really great way to, to do that because sometimes you, you, you'll start reading it together with the consultant and you'll realize, oh yeah, okay, no, I actually feel good about like the first two pages. Let's, let's move on, right? And oh, okay, Leah, let's zero in on this. This is the place where now I remember I was feeling like more troubled or confused about what, what I was doing. Any other questions? No. Okay, well, I think that um, 